Hey everybody, Shark Scrapper here. Well, I had something very unusual happen. A representative from Kiwitz reached out to me and asked me if I would be interested in doing a video review of this tool of theirs, the screwdriver set. We're, it's an electric screwdriver. It has, they say it has magnetic design, 360 LED light, durable precision bits. So we're going to go ahead and do a quick review on this, or however long it takes us to do the review. So you can see it comes in a nice box, has a nice case that the tool comes in. It's got its uh, own user's manual. So I'm looking forward to messing around with this. Let's see what we've got here. Now, I know it's not like most guys to actually look at the manual, but in this case I'm going to, just so I have a better idea of what we're dealing with. So the... Um, I just opened it up, I've, I've not looked at this at all. Uh, it has 120 pieces, hex heads, torx, security torx, flat heads, nut drivers, Phillips, um, you know, the small sizes, quad aught two, triple aught two, double aught two, aught two, uh, one two and two two. Tri wings, posi drives, Pentalopes, triangles, U drives, squares, mids, and sims, conical needle, a game bit. So uh, it has an adapter, a quarter uh, a quarter inch adapter. ICS twenty. So there's some, you know, they've they've thought through the the types of bits that they should include in here. I am going to go ahead and get this plugged in and charge it up before we do anything. Uh, but we want to go ahead and take a quick look at it. Since I got to open it up to charge it anyway. Nice kit. Um, we have one loose bit in here as I open it up. But I like how it's got this flap that goes down over the over the bits. And let's see, these are actually the adapters, it looks like, that, that were not sure where they were supposed to be. There's no, um, oh, they were right here. So they would just go right in there. There we go. So, nice. They, they look like they're good quality bits. Of course, we won't know until we actually start messing with them and uh, get around to breaking them. <laughs> uh, let's face it, it's, um, you know, some of these, some of these things that can be, they can really take some abuse, so we'll see. Um, here we've got some nice uh, ad adapters here. We've got a little sponge here to hang things. I'm not sure what these little clips are. We'll be finding out. Here's our charger. And let's see, what is this? Uh, USB. All right, a USB to a mini. Uh, there's another adapter. Okay. So um, uh, we'll have to uh, get this plugged in. Let's see, here's the, here's the actual screwdriver itself. Oh, it comes in a nice little plastic case to keep it protected. So we, we plug in here, and then this end plugs into a typical USB connection somewhere. Very nice, very nice clean design. It's big enough that it'll have a nice feel in the hand. So yeah, I'm looking forward to get to using this, but first we gotta get it charged up. So, because I wanna make sure I give it a, a fair assessment. I don't wanna mess around with it until I get it charged up. But nice clean holder arrangement here. Let's see, what are some of these other things? Other accessories, a suction cup with SIM card pin. Okay, right there, right there. Oops, the other way. All right, so there's a suction cup with a SIM card pin, a 120 millimeter poly pry tool. I guess that's that. A cleaning brush, a magnetizer demagnetizer, a magnetic mat, uh, three red thin triangle opening picks, three red triangle, three more red, oh thick, so thick and thin opening picks here, very cool. 
This is the magnetizer, demagnetizer. An extension shaft, that's this. A metal spudger, um, that'll be this. A flexible, oh, so, no, here's the metal shaft was in here. This is the flexible shaft, extension shaft. Angled tweezers, that'll be these. Electric screwdriver handle, and the USB cable. Okay, so, um, clearly, the intention behind this tool is for working on small electronics. So, you know, intention mostly for people that are going to be repairing. Repairing, oh my God, I can't even believe I said that word, repairing electronics. And when I was talking to them, I told them that I don't repair stuff, but I was still interested in reviewing this because it could come in handy for tearing apart smaller things like laptops and such. And that some of my viewers uh, go even further into scrapping than I do, so they might be interested in a toolkit like this for that purpose. So, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get this charged up and we will be back after it's charged up to start messing around with it and see how it handles uh, some of the typical things that we would take apart. Shark Scrapper, it's time to start playing with our Kaiweets power screwdriver, the ES20. So here's our setup. I have charged it overnight and then I let it set for a couple of days trying to simulate, you know, how it might actually work in your own shop. I have a laptop computer here and we'll also do a hard drive because that's the typical kind of stuff that you and I would scrap using this tool. Come on, let's dive in. All right, everybody, so uh, remember, this is the tool that came in a plastic tube. Uh, if you're gonna keep it for yourself, you probably don't need to keep the plastic tube. Just, uh, I, I haven't, I don't know what to do with it yet. So anyway, there's the device. I charged it up uh, overnight and then let it set for a couple days to simulate the way we might actually use it in our shops. So we've got forward, back, here, here, um, and a light. So that's pretty cool. You got a little LED light, and then forward back. It it should be pretty easy to use. Uh, I'm left-handed, but of course it'll work right-handed. <laughs> so uh, you know, should be pretty easy to use. Uh, we'll see. We're gonna dive in now. We've got all kinds of bits to choose from here. So we're gonna set this up here. Here's a Dell laptop. This one I guaranteed destruction on for the client. So uh, I'm gonna be pulling the hard drive anyway, so we might as well just have some fun and use this. Now, you have seen me take something like this apart with my big DeWalt. Uh, I have a brand new bit. It's a, uh, which one is this? Is this the one? Yeah, this is a PH1. And so this one works, you know, pretty well, but sometimes it's just too big for these kind of screws. So we're going to find out here if this works any better. Uh, let's see. Let's start out with a one. They actually give you, in the Phillips heads, they give you a multiple of the common tools. Now, it's gonna, I'm still getting used to this, so I may make some mistakes here, but... That's a nice, smooth turn. It doesn't over torque and jerk in your hand. So nice and smooth. Uh, easily remove those screws. So we've got some nice little ram sticks here. Just one gigabyte each. And let's see, how well does that bit stay in there? Pretty good. It's not falling out from the normal kind of, you know, oh, I dropped it or, you know, that kind of thing. So 
but it also pulls out easy enough. So I like that feature. Uh, let's see, we have another. Now in this case, it, it uh, didn't have enough torque to get the screw turning, so it's pretty easy to just give it a little turn by hand to get, this, to get the screw started. So that's the Wi-Fi. Now we're going to get the screw, the, the Plento screws that are all around. It's not very fast, but it is very smooth. Not terribly loud. In fact, I don't even know if you all can hear it. The button does not require a lot of effort to push down. So it's very comfortable in the hand. Also very lightweight. Alright, so, oops. Kind of bogged down a little bit on that one. I don't know what that was all about. Now, there's the hard drive for this laptop. So, I didn't, I don't have to, you know, take the whole laptop apart, but uh, we're doing it to test this. So, this will also be interesting because since I have to destroy this, since I have to destroy this hard drive anyway, let's go ahead and mess around with taking it apart to continue our test of this device. Now I think this bit is a little too big, so we'll put that back in. That's the that was a one. Let's go with a. Uh, I think we're going to try a triple lot on this. Let's see. It seems to grab it all right. Yep, the triple lot works fine there. It sounds like it's bogging down. On these little screws, I don't know if that's just if it's really bogging down or that's just what it sounds like at this point, but can't tell for sure yet. Ah, we've got another screw on the side here. We're going to go back to the one that's a little bigger. Put you back in. The, uh, the, the uh, bits come in and out of the holder real easy. All right, there was the little sheet metal caddy for that. There's the hard drive. We're going to get the board off of the back, so we're going to switch back to the smaller bit. We have, uh, for Phillips heads, they go from 4 aught up to a 2. And they give you multiples of each size. Uh, just in case you, uh, you strip it out while you're working on it. Now I do find myself accidentally turning the light on. I wonder if we're just we're already using up too much juice here. I don't know. We're going to keep going.
it, um, it, it, can't, it doesn't have enough torque to overcome the screw right away, so I just give it a little twist, and then it comes out. You can see there, just spun the thing around. All right, so now we can get that board off of there. Now these boards aren't a whole lot. I wouldn't have normally taken this off, but I did for the purpose of this test video. Now I want to emphasize, usually with these, if you have to destroy them, laptop, that the disc is usually glass. Give it a good whack with a hammer, and if it shakes, you're done. Uh, I'm only doing this because I have to, I want to test this, this device, so I am messing around with this a bit more than I otherwise would. That is the screw. All right, it punched through the plastic and it unscrewed it even though the plastic was holding it on, but it is wearing down. I can feel it wearing down. So there's our disc. I think that's glass, so I'm gonna be really careful with it. Uh, but now we have some other smaller Phillips in here, so let's go ahead and get those out. Uh, it's still got, I think sometimes some of the screws are just tougher, so it bogs down a little bit. Seems to still be going fine. Get these little neodymiums out of here. And then we have a little Torx down there. So let's go after that Torx. Today's a warm one. Uh, you can see me sweating. T6. Yeah, there we are, T6. And the motor does, could not overcome the resistance. Now I got it started and it works fine. There's our discs. I'll, I'll uh, smash those in a minute. And we have a little flathead holding the arm on here. All right. Well, let's see what else we can continue to work on and uh, continue the test here. I'm wanna, I want to see if in the course of a normal, you know, take a laptop apart, um, that, it, that it keeps going without any issues. I imagine it will, but won't know until we actually do it. I'm going to put my, little, my gloves on because we're starting to get sharp edges here. All right, now we're back to some Phillips heads here. So let's get the Torx back in. And now with my gloves on, it's still very easy to get the bits in and out of their holders. We'll see how easy it is to screw and unscrew things. is too big. I'm going to go with a zero, an ought. That ought to work. So I can't tell if the battery is running down or if I'm not just pressing this correctly.
you know, it's a new tool, so I, you know, I'm not sure, and I don't want to say there's something wrong with the tool if it's just the way I'm, you know, I'm not familiar with handling it yet. It does appear to be working fine, but it, it also sounds like it's dragging a little bit. There's the hard drive caddy. And let's see. Who's holding up the show? Nobody. We have the board out. So there's our laptop board. We've already removed the batteries. This can get sold to board sort just the way it is. I am going to continue to take some screws out as we stress test this thing. So here's the fan. Now here we have a lot of aluminum as part of the shell, part of the frame that things were screwed to. So we're going to go ahead and continue unscrewing things. Part of that aluminum it might be magnesium, but for my yard, it, they consider it the same thing, which I know is weird, but it's just the way to do it. Now, uh, the goal of what we're doing here is to test this screwdriver. So I'm not going to rest around with the laptop anymore. I'm going to grab a hard drive and let's, uh, let's work on taking a hard drive apart. So here we have a typical SATA hard drive, a Western Digital Caviar, 80 gigabytes, nothing special. Swap out the, very easy to find the bits they have the numbers and the codes and a, a representation of it. So that's why I was very easily, I was easily able to recognize, oh, that was a star bit I had before, not a Torx. Makes all the difference in the world. Um, T8. Motor does not want to handle that one at all until we get it going. So we give it a spin to loosen it up and then it works fine. Really dragging on these larger torques for this board. All right, now. So, it, it won't start the screw by itself. It just sits there and, and winds, so it, it won't turn, but it will hold if I give it a turn and loosen the screw, then, it's, then it does fine.
and it's a little bit boggy on this. There you are. There you are. Now you all know that I don't normally do hard drives, so uh, uh, this is just being done for the purpose of testing this, because there are those of you that might want to use this as a tool to help you scrap these things out. And so far, the, the things that I would comment on is that it, it turns slowly, but if you're in the repair world, that's probably a good thing, so that you're not stripping out your screws or rounding out the the, uh, the head and so that you don't over torque when you're screwing it down. Uh, for scrappers, of course, we like to move as fast as we can. So for us, I guess as long as it's the, sa the time saving is that we're not stripping out threads and then having to resort to more violent means to get these things undone. <laughs> All right, that torx is too big for those. So it won't overcome the initial, just like with the, most of the screws we've done so far, it can't overcome the, that little bit of lockup at the beginning. So a twist gets it going. And I keep turning the light on. Not necessarily a bad thing. All right. So there's the hard drive disk. And what are you? Aluminum. Screws out of the way. And the motor. A little bit of wiggle room in there. I'm going to see if an 8 fits tighter. The 8 does fit tighter. I'm, I'm worried that when I do this to get the screw loose that that might be damaging the internals. I don't know. I don't know if that's going to be a long-term problem or not. Okay, so there's our motor. I did not notice in the owner's manual that the button that turns the LED light on and off is also the torque adjustment switch. Uh, when you hold it down for three seconds, the you have an adjustment to the torque. And I did not test this in this uh, run because I didn't realize that that was a feature that it had. So that might make a difference in some of the way these, uh, overcoming some of the friction with these screws. All right, so now we have aluminum shell. I could bust out that spindle if I wanted to, but no big deal. So 
This thing handled a, hard, a laptop and a hard drive very nicely. It still spins well, so I think what I'm feeling as bogging down is just it, the motor dealing with the resistance of the, of the screw. Um, so, and you know, it's not got as big a motor as say my DeWalt, so of course there's gonna be, you know, it's gonna bog down a bit for those tight screws. Uh, but very nice, smooth feel to it. Uh, I like that. If I was a repair person, I think that this could be a very useful tool for me. Um, and it certainly is handy if you're a hobby scrapper and you're going to be scrapping out all of the hard drives and the laptops because you're just killing time and taking things apart down to the little tiny nuts and bolts and everything else. Uh, it's got a plethora of bit types to choose from. So all of those hard to find security bits and uh, U-types and uh, uh, Phillips with a pin sticking out and security torques, uh, Y bits, all imaginable type bits here uh, as, as you are working on little things. I, my guess is that if you come across a bit I mean, if you come across a weird screw, there's a bit here for you. That's, I mean, it just, there's so many to choose from here. And then it also has, because it's intended for repair people, it also has these tools like this pry, plastic pry, so that you can get the screens off of uh, lap, uh, uh, tablets and phones and such. You've got a brush to clean things off. You've got a little tweezers right there. Uh, a flexible extender, should you need to get you know, should you need to uh, be dealing with something that's uh, on an angle or something, that could be very handy. Uh, a little spatula. So when you have to put that heat paste back on, I guess, <laughs> or scrape it off. So there are certainly uh, uh, some nice, uh, and then there's, the, oh yeah, I forgot. This is a magnetizer, demagnetizer. So there's a lot of, good tools here especially if you do any repair work or if you're a hobbyist that's doing a lot of small type scrapping close you back up so you all know that i like to be straight up with you when i do these kind of tests one of the things that i'm simply not set up to provide you an accurate test on is runtime uh, that would require, you know, give it a full charge, start a timer, uh, put a clamp on the handle and just let it run. That would be an unloaded runtime test. Uh, I suppose I could mess around with doing something like that, but I don't know that we're going to get there from here. And the truth is, does that really matter for you? What you want to know is how many laptops could you take apart? How many hard drives could you take apart? And to be perfectly honest with you, I have no idea. I'm not going to take the time to do that test. My sense is from the way I felt this thing working is you would get in a good day's work before you had to recharge it. At least a good day's work, maybe more. Um, I did that laptop, I did that hard drive, it still seemed to have plenty of juice left in it. So short of doing some true kind of load testing on it, I'm not prepared to tell you how many laptops or hard drives you would get out of this. Uh, before you had to recharge it. But recharging is real easy, simple plug into a USB uh, type connector somewhere and it's gonna charge up for you. So uh, I'm gonna give this a thumbs up. Um, I like the feel, I like the way it works, it's very smooth. So yeah, I'm giving this one a thumbs up. I'm gonna go check out Kiweets and see what other tools and test equipment they have. See if there's anything else there that might be of interest to what we do. Uh, I encourage you to go check them out too. There might be something there for you. I have noticed some other folks that have tested some of their electronic test kits, their meggers and things of that nature. Uh, so one of the things that they have told me is that, these are YouTubers that have tested this, is that this is inexpensive but not cheap, right? So what they mean by that is it's not gonna cost you an arm and a leg to buy these tools, but they're good tools. Uh, now I can't speak 
for the megas and the and the you know circuit testers and things like that because that's not the world that I've tested. But I can tell you from this, this is not a cheap, flimsy tool. This was well put together. It feels good in my hand. And uh, you'll see the price when you check them out. So it's not going to cost you an arm and a leg to get this either if, if you want to have it. So again, thumbs up. I like it so far. Uh, if I'm messing around with it and anything changes, I'll be sure to let you know.